Okay, I'd like to call to order the current Council of Governments meeting for Transportation Planning Policy Committee. First order of business was we'll stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, ask for a roll call vote. Couch. Couch. Helton. Blades. Present. Crump. Here. Tofoya. Kiersey. Pryor. Here. Navarro. Here. Lisinovich. Here. Para. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Here. Scribner. Smith. Phil Smith. Here. Trujillo. And Vasquez. Couch, are you here? Kersey with the JTPB is online. Okay, Kersey, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Madam Chairman. You have enough? Very good. Okay, public comment time. If anyone in the audience cares to address the group, we come forward at this time. Do we have anyone that's called in? No? Okay, well, we'll move on. The next item is the consent, or no, I guess we do it separate. The special action item for Assembly Bill 361 authorizing teleconferencing under certain conditions. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the, of the committee. Um, this is a regular item for us, right, at this point in time uh, so that we can continue to do the teleconference um, for the board meetings uh, without everyone that's at home having to open up their house and um, actually post the, the uh, agenda at their home. So um, what we're asking is that you adopt resolution number 22-15, which will take us from March 19th to April 18th, 2022. Thank you. Any further questions of staff? Hearing none, we'll ask for a motion. Motion. Second. Second. Did you get those? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Okay. Couch. I don't think he's here. Helton. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Kersey. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Lisinovich? Yes. Prout? Yes. Reyna? Yes. And Phil Smith? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the next item are the consent items, and we have um, A through P. Does anyone have any questions? Need to pull anything? Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion to approve consent calendar as written. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve consent calendar. Roll call. Phil Smith. Yes. Raina. Aye. Prout. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Michael Navarro. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Kersey. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Item five is the 2021 Federal Transportation Improvement Program for the draft amendment number 10. 
Good evening, Good Madam morning. Chair and members of the committee. Amendment number 10 includes revisions to the Regional Surface Transportation Program, Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program, and the Regional Trails Pro Recreational Trails Program. The public review period ends March 18th. The KernCog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on March 21st. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask the Chair to please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Okay, at this time, I will open the public hearing. If anyone cares to address the group, may come forward at that time. Anyone online? Hearing none, we will close the hearing and- um, Thank you. Thank you, staff. Okay, um, the next item for Caltrans. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, members. Uh, Michael Navarro with District 6. So um, just to express our happiness with the Clean California program. So we had a very successful um, Clean California outcome for the local partnership grants. That's the one that had the $300 million for the competitive program. So we received 34 applications in our district, and 15 of those were successful. And six of those projects were right here in the Kern County area. And that's just the District 6. Um, Kirsten will have some for District 9 that were successful as well. But those six projects, we brought in about $18 million in Clean California, Clean California funding that will fund about $21 million in projects. So we had one go in Bakersfield, uh, McFarland, Shafter, Wasco, and two, uh, two in Kern County. Um, that's in addition to the, one, the projects that Caltrans has already committed to doing. So there's the five projects we've already had programmed for Clean California that we'll be initiating as well. So um, well over $25 million in, in projects that include beautification, complete street elements, et cetera. So I think a uh, great outcome for the region. Uh, going into projects, so the Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project, this is modifying the 50, State Route 5899 interchange. Uh, plan to have that wrapped up this spring. Uh, the bridge widening of westbound 58 over 99 is completed. The new loop uh, ramp from westbound 58 to, state, to southbound 99 is nearing completion. And the, the loop connector is progressing. So progress is also being made on the pavement work along southbound 99, including the southbound Ming off-ramp. A uh, State Route 99 rehab project from Palm Avenue overcrossing uh, to Beardsley Canal Bridge. So work scheduled for the upcoming month along the main line while completing some hot mix asphalt and continuous reinforced concrete pavement as part of stage three, uh, phase one. And we're expected to have a traffic switch in early April. At State Route 178 and Buck Owens Boulevard, uh, work there, southbound 99 on-ramp work uh, was expected to start yesterday. So that work will take approximately one week to reopen the ramp. And this project is also completed, uh, anticipated to be completed by spring of this year. Uh, the old US 99 to White Lane State Route 99 rehab project. Uh, this project started back in mid-November. Uh, they started the uh, tree removals, should have started today, and that'll take about 15 days. Uh, the future further activities will occur between Panama Lane and White Lane, and that work will include uh, doing pavement work on the inside lanes and the shoulder, and that work will occur between uh, today and March 27th. And that project will be wrapping up spring of 2023. Uh, the State Route 223 Derby Signal Project. Um, this is a safety project on the east end of Arvin. Project's about 95% complete. All, road work, all the road work is complete except for a few minor punchless items. Signal poles were installed, and PGE is expected to energize the system the week of April 4th and then coordinate and sync the signals with the railroad signals. The State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout. That project was awarded on February 24th. Uh, we're waiting for that contract to be approved, and we anticipate construction starting uh, this August. The Arvin 223-184 roundabout, that contract is approved as well. Expect to start construction in June of this year. Uh, we just kicked off environmental for the State Route 437 standard roundabout. So that's the project where uh, Caltrans will be taking over the environmental work. Uh, we had a kickoff meeting in January. <coughs> and um, we're still scoping out how long that environmental process is going to take. Um, we are allowing for 20 months, but it kind of depends on what it takes place if we get the seasonal studies done this spring. Hopefully, if we can, we can hopefully accelerate that time frame. Union Avenue High Intensity Activated Crosswalk. This project was advertised on February 28th. Bids will be open on March 29th. Uh, this is the one we've been trying to accelerate. Um, we did shave time off the earlier anticipated schedule. And we think construction will take about three to four months. All right, this is a long one. So stay route 46, uh, segment B. I'm sure you heard about the incident that occurred out there during construction. Um, the first girders being installed during erection failed on February 28th, which closed State Route 46. 
Um, it, it collapsed on the existing bridge, and on Thursday, March 3rd, uh, March 3rd, the girder was removed and the bridge was reopened. So now we expect that could be as much of a four month delay on that project. So what happens is these are precast, so they're precast in 70 foot sections. We'd have to bring those in, splice together to make a 210 foot uh, girder. Um, so unfortunately, like I said, there'll be some delays. There'll be some investigation work going on to see what caused that girder to fail before we install the other ones. So in the meanwhile, the, the contractor will continue to work, but we'll be working on sidewalk and other elements of the project until we figure out what happened with the first girder. Um, that completes my project my project updates i did want to circle back um there's some concerns raised about the pavement condition out there by tower road on 58. so we do have a couple projects out there uh, we have one that'll be going next year for a, for a portion of that in the westbound direction where i think where most of the concerns were expressed um, we will continue to do some patch up work along the way until that project is done we have a much more larger project that's much further down our in our program it's about a 14 mile rehab project that is about six years out, but we're going to look to initiate another uh, highway maintenance project in the meantime to help bridge that gap between the project going next year and the other components of the, of the longer range project. So hopefully that will address the pavement issues that have been experienced out there. With that, that completes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I have one question. When you have an issue like that, that a, girder, a girder fails sooner, is there recourse back to the uh, company that installed it? I think you're still investigating what the cause was. Um, I think I'd just be speculating at this point to say where I think the, 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 blame, the blame lies, but um, they'll do their investigation. They hope to have that resolved the next week or two to figure out what the cause was, whether how it was lifted, how was the fault to be to begin with, and then I think that at that point they'll determine the, the course of action. And usually they have insurance that covers <laughs> their constructions like that, that it goes back so many years, and that warranty is it goes to insurance and cover that expense. Yeah. That, uh, Unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that question. I apologize. Okay. I don't work in the construction side. I would assume so, but I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I do have one, actually, a <laughs> comment. Michael, um, the meeting prior to February the 17th, I had asked you a question and you, you know, graciously answered through an email, and I was supposed to get back to you, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with the uh, crossing at Highway 43 and 8th Street. Mm -hmm. Um, you pointed out to me on your email that uh, a more visible uh, crosswalk had been put in place. Right. Uh, but that's still an issue. Um, people uh, that are traveling both uh, south and north on Highway 43 are not stopping. Uh, I experienced it myself. Our employees experience it all, all the time. And, and we also have an addition of the current uh, transit bus, which is now stopping in front of City Hall and people, uh, pedestrians, are crossing Highway 43 going um, west. And so I think it's uh, time for us to revisit that and, and possibly come up with a better solution than that the uh, um, cross uh, that was um, painted mm -hmm. uh, on, on, the, on the road uh, to have some uh, beacons. And I always mispronounce that word, but anyway. Yeah. No, understood. Okay. That'd be that'd be the next step. I think we put out the ladder markings, the continental markings, initially, which is the uh, more visible crosswalk. Um, the next step would be looking at something like rectangular rapid flashing beacons. Um, I, I I could circle back to the team and see if that's a solution for that location. Uh, we've done them a couple of ways. We look to incorporate them as part of a Caltrans project um, as one opportunity. Uh, we we've been able to install them under permit with a local agency as well. I know the solar power ones are, are pretty affordable, but let me have that conversation back and see if that is a, a viable solution for that, that location. That would be great uh, because the problem still exists. Mm -hmm. It hasn't gone away, and with uh, both pedestrians and more vehicular traffic uh, mm -hmm. passing through there, it's just a mo uh, matter of time before we have, you know, a tragedy occurs. And when you, when you mentioned the bus, is the bus blocking visibility or saying no, the, no, bu the, bus the bus is, is adding to more pedestrian traffic exactly, crossing Exactly, the, the bus is adding uh, uh, pedestrian traffic because they, they upload and download uh, right in front of City Hall. Understood. Okay. I'll, I'll circle back with you and reach out to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. No further questions. Yes, sir. M Mayor this Pratt is uh, Phil oh. and Yes, uh, Thank you for the feedback on Westbound 58 near Tower Line Road. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else online? I have a question, too, if that's okay, Mayor. Yeah, you have a question. I have a comment, too, so go ahead. Uh, M Michael, I was in a, a meeting this afternoon with Caltrans um, going over the status of projects, and um, a project in Wasco was mentioned, the roundabout um, at the inter at the easternmost intersection of 46 and 43. Uh, 
and it was uh, reported that the project is going to be delayed by a year in order to incorporate the uh, the high-speed rail work under the bridge. Could you make sure that um, um, that the project manager reaches out to City of Wasco staff and lets them know uh, why the project is being delayed? It's, be it's being delayed for a, a logical reason to incorporate the other work, but I'm not sure if they're aware of it yet. Yeah, it's a good observation. Yeah, definitely that should be communicated to the city, so I will circle back with them as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hakimi. We, we are not aware of it as far as I'm concerned, so thank you. Yeah, since we're talking roundabout, uh, do you have any updates or any timeline for Shafter's roundabout at um, Santa Fe and I don't know if you call it Beach or Los Angeles or does anyone know? It, it is at Santa Fe. I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with that project, but I'd, I'd have to research the status of it. I'd because be I know people keep asking me because of that stop sign. Well, it's a five-way intersection. Right. But it's kind of wild and crazy. But yeah, the, uh, the, uh, are we uh, looking at a Madam, year and a half or two? Madam Chair, the, the project was discussed today during my update. Oh. It is it is on schedule. I believe it's uh, in uh, the preliminary engineering or design phase now. but. Uh, it is on schedule. So it's a year and a half we could be driving on it? N n no. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the citizens are waiting <laughs> every day. <laughs> well, uh, as you know, th th that, yes. that intersection is is a lot more complicated than yes. a, a regular exactly. uh, two streets crossing each other. It's currently five-legged, right. and there's the railroad involved. Right. So um, it is, it's a lot more complex mm -hmm. and a lot more right of way and um, involvement with the railroad. So it, it's it's not just a, a standard uh, roundabout that Cal. Does it eliminate the offices there? I, I, I don't know the details of, of the uh, right of way acquisition yet. Because that would be the only thing that's in the way. Otherwise, that whole area is open. It's clear. Did you have something on it, Raquel? Yeah. No, I, I Ms. Pacheco did give me the schedule. Let me see here. Kel, can you help me read this? Because even oftentimes during oh, the day, go. day hours, I mean, traffic backs up. Uh, they're pretty cautious. They are cautious about the intersection that's there. And well. I use it too, but um, yeah, it, it's really, it'll be fun. And, and people are beginning to appreciate turn, uh, roundabouts. So, so Madam Chair, we're about almost exactly two years. April of, of 2024, the construction contract, uh, uh, the project will go to construction. They have to bid it, and it'll take a few months to bid. So about two and a half years from now, oh, you should see, see construction. I've been stretching it to one and a half. Okay. I'll still maybe. <laughs> I mean, at least they know they're looking for them. The years go by fast, so let's hope it goes faster. huh? And the other one I wanted to comment on was this California Clean. And I'm sure you know that the um, applications were due in such a fast timeline, and our staff was able to put a really nice projects together, and we didn't get one of the awards, and you mentioned Shafter. And, yeah, it's pretty exciting because we'd like to see those projects even be finished tomorrow, especially with our swimming pool because it hasn't been used since the pandemic. And even now with the high school, they're having to transport the students out of town to use the swimming. So we were hoping to even fast track it so that they could swim by January and staff knows it's probably not going to happen but they're pushing so but it yeah. re you really filled it because I d we didn't know how we were going to finance it when that grant came up I mean it was really godsend us sure yeah you had you after I know they had a very I remember your application a very thorough application um and big ass I was happy to see that one get awarded and and, and the good thing about clean California there, there is pressure to deliver those projects I think ours, I think the local A's have three years. We have like two years for our own projects. So ours are highly accelerated. Um, but um, congratulations on, on, yeah, your, on your award well, and grant. And we appreciate the fact that, yeah, that we were able to put it together and you were able to respond just as fast as you did too. Yeah, that, it's unheard of for us to turn out a grant program that quick. And for us to have applications due on February 1st and to be awarded by March 1st, because our own typical planning grant program we do every year, which is much smaller than mm -hmm. Clean California in terms of available funds, I mean, as Kern Cog knows, I mean, we, we yeah. require applications October, and they don't hear it till May or June after their o OWP is yeah. even completed. So, um, so yeah. it's pretty amazing how they turn that around. So well, the right. pool is the big project, but then the other parks get noticed too. And right. so, yeah, that's, that's, that's really a 
big feather for us. Yeah, yeah. we're pretty excited. But I wanted to say thank you. Oh. Madam Chair, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Wasco. Wasco got $5 million mm -hmm. yes, you did. A, a, of a grant, so we're very pleased that we were able to get that, and we're moving forward to the downtown beautification and rehabilitation. So thank you also. No, excellent. I'm happy. I'm happy for all you. Like I said, the district did very well, but I mean, it's not a credit to us. It's a credit to the applications mm -hmm. right. you all put together because if you look at how we scored uh, statewide, I mean, there's 12 districts in the Caltrans districts, and um, the only two that scored higher, that received more applications was the LA office received the most, which obviously had a bunch more applications. Mm -hmm. And then um, District 4, which is in the Bay Area, they received 16 applications, and we received 15 here in the Central Valley. So um, we competed with a much bigger district that had several more applications, and like I said 15 out of 34. So it's just a testament to the quality of applications your, yeah. your agencies put together. So thank you for that. Yeah, they're worthy too. So. Yeah. And one more thing, Madam Chair, Wasco and Shafter respectively received the two largest mm -hmm. grants in the county. So congratulations. And Kern County received the most grants in the Central Valley. So yes. congratulations to everyone. Yes. And, and it's in, Thank there's you. a copy of the uh, printout of all the awards is in your folder today. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, it was worthy to notice. It just It's timely very much. Um, okay, we'll have District 9. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening. Uh, I'm Kirsten Helton. I'm the Deputy District 9 Director for Planning and Environmental. I have just a few things for you. Um, we want to give congratulations also to Mojave, Tehachapi, and Ridgecrest for receiving um, Clean the California fundings as well. Um, we're looking for community contacts in Mojave so we can get some public feedback on their Clean California beautification project. Uh, also a reminder that Caltrans adopt a highway volunteers can earn up to $250 a month to clear litter from the California highways as part of Governor uh, Newsom's $1.1 billion Clean California program. And so more information on that can be found at cleancalifornia.com as well. As far as project updates, the Rosamond Mojave Rehabilitation Project is essentially complete. Uh, north, both northbound lanes and southbound lanes are open and we're just doing some minor finishing work. There's utility work going on um, on State Route 178 East from the junction of State Route 14 to Red Rock Inyo Kern Road. And utility work on Walker Pass from 178 between Scotty Lane and Arlana Lane east of Onyx. And um, so each of those will have one-way traffic during certain hours of the day. And then we have projects on the state highway system. Uh, we have right now Tehachapi Crack Seal operation on State Route 58 between Broom Road and the junction with State Route 202. And Jack's Ranch Road paving work on State Route 178 East from Jack's, road to, uh, Jack's Ranch Road to um, Ridgecrest. And so neither one of those will be impacting traffic. And that's all I've got, uh, any questions, unless there are any questions. Any questions? Uh, I have a question, yeah. Madam Chair, if that's okay. Yes. Kirsten, I heard today in that Caltrans update, it was from District 6 and 9, that um, the project uh, on 14 that you reported is wrapping up, uh, has some uh, concrete that is has been rejected, and there's a dispute between the contractor and Caltrans. Can you please uh, update us next month on if that's going to result in uh, more closures and and what the impact to the highway will be. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think we know the answer to that yet, but I'll update you next month. Uh, Kirsten, what is the website where people can find out more about um, this uh, $250 stipend if yeah. they participate? It's cleanca.com. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody online? Yeah, this is Kyle Blades, British Crest, California. Uh, Kirsten, I just wanted to give a compliment to your crew that works in and out route 178 throughout the city because you know it 178 does come mostly through Ridgecrest and your crew does a very good job of keeping the roads clean keeping them up um, up to par and I just want to pass that positive feedback along the only uh, complaint that I've had is that downs in 178 there is a big asphalt chunk out of the road I, I don't know how that works between uh, you know you guys you Caltrans and us the city but I just want to make sure that it's on your radar with all of your other projects going on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate hearing the, the good words, and I will share it with my staff. Good. Anyone else? Hearing oh, none? Madam Chair, sorry. I just yeah. want to respond to uh, 
Mayor Reyna's comment about the uh, cleanups. So but we have, a, in, since you're in District 6, we do have a, a coordinator for the for the adopt a hire program for the stipend so i could forge that information as when i follow up with you on the 40 on the uh crosswalk at 8th street and give you the contact information and some more detail. that'll be great michael thank you i appreciate that okay we're giving last chance here <laughs> we've had good words tonight that's great uh executive director's report good evening again madam chair and board members i have uh, several items on this agenda the California Transportation Commission met yesterday and today. Several items uh, were of interest to Kern County and, and our uh, member agencies. Um, today the 2022 STIP was adopted. Uh, part of uh, the actions that uh, happened today was the Hageman extension. It's a project that we funded here at Kern COG. Received money in the 2025-2026 year. State Route 46, the final segment in Kern County, received funding. Um, truck climbing lanes uh, project received funding uh, for just environmental work. And um, we met in closed session uh, about six months ago about settling a uh, disagreement with Caltrans over um, Route 46. That was settled today at the CTC with a $4 million contribution to the next 46 uh, segment. Thank you for your confidence in letting me settle that, and thanks to Caltrans for following through on, uh, on settling that issue. Also today at the CTC, the 2022 ATP, uh, the 2022 ATP Cycle 6 call for projects was adopted. Applications are due June 15th. This will be the largest ATP cycle in the history of mm -hmm. ATP. There's over $650 million available statewide. And as you know, um, you apply first for state funding. If you're not funded um, by the state, you can still compete with um, funding from the MPO. Our share after projects compete for the um, state funding will be $6.4 million and that is also the largest share we've ever received uh, in the history of ATP. Um, some of you I've talked to about, I have uh, the four city managers of the cities that are affected by high-speed rail and the county of Kern are meeting here in the boardroom in a couple of weeks to talk about the high-speed rail's most recent business plan. I will keep you updated and we plan on uh, bringing in um, hopefully mayors and, and council members to the follow-up meeting to that meeting that we're having with staff. Um, Kern Cog staff, specifically Ms. Napier, has been, continues to work with CHP to try to get an agreement um, that we've been working on for about two years now to um, help CHP out with overtime during weather events. The staff and I have attended several meetings over the past month, um, including meeting about 99 and 58, addressing the mis missing connectors, State Route 204, or what we know as Union Avenue, uh, which was also addressed at Bakersfield's um, City Council meeting yesterday afternoon, 7th Senate and 43, which Michael mentioned. Uh, I also continue to meet on State Route 33 on the west part of the county. Um, have a meeting tomorrow on State Route 46 and a meeting next week on truck climbing lanes on State Route 58. That concludes my report, Madam Chair, subject to any questions. Any questions of staff? Just one quick one. Uh, when, when are the ATP applications due? Thank you very much. This is Phil. Uh, Mr. Hakimi, uh, thanks for your continued efforts on the truck climbing lanes. I just don't always chime in, but I know you're working on it, and thanks for keeping the focus. Oh, it, it's my pleasure, uh, Mayor Smith, and, and that is the truck climbing lanes is one of the topics we are going to discuss with High Speed Rail because um, I think you know it, but uh, many of the other board members and the public don't know it, but. High speed rail, if they build past Bakersfield, will have to move Route um, 
58 laterally at one of the locations where truck climbing lanes uh, will be necessary. So uh, part of the conversation that we plan to have with high-speed rail is don't wait until you build high-speed rail. Go ahead and move 58 now or as early as you can. And when you do move 58 laterally, add the truck climbing lanes. And uh, Ms. Helton, is, who's here today, is actually working on the environmental uh, process with a, a grant that we received uh, in the last days of, th of the Trump administration. We split that grant, grant roughly 50-50. We sent $5 million to uh, Caltrans to work on the truck climbing lanes and $5 million to um, the metro area to work on the Hageman flyover. So uh, to make a long story sh short, the truck climbing lanes, even though it may not seem related, are are going to be part of the discussion that we have with high speed rail. Thank you. Any other Thank comments? Thank you very much. Lots of activities going on. Um, uh, we have no other reports. Members have anything? No? We'll adjourn this meeting. Do I need a motion to adjourn it? No? Okay, we'll just move into the other one. Okay, we'll open the current Council of Governments agenda, and, and it's now. 705 and do you have roll call did it change at all no and then we will move right into public comment anyone in the audience or online want to address the committee on anything we come forward at this time hearing none we'll move on then to the consent agenda any questions or comments on the consent agenda we have items from a to g Hearing none, we'll have an entertainment uh, entertainer motion to approve. Motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Roll call. Blades. Aye. Crow. Aye. Cryer. Yes. Lucinovich? Yes. Kraut? Yes. Reyna? Aye. And Phil Smith? Yes. Very good. Um, we really don't have much till we get to the executive director's report. Thank you, and good evening again, Madam Chair and board members. I just have three items on this agenda. A reminder, your uh, Form 700 Form 700s are due uh, by April 1st. Uh, I want to make a brief report on the regional awards. And I know Chairman Smith is not here, but I want to thank him for uh, being the master of cer ceremonies. And there are at least three of you here today and others who attended. Thank you, board members, for attending. And I especially want to uh, thank uh, the gentlemen who are behind closed doors tonight and are almost always behind closed doors, the uh, gen uh, professionals from current government tel television, Gabe, Tom, and Tim for doing an outstanding job. Uh, it was an ex if you did not attend, it was uh, excellent, professional, and here on the staff, the, uh, right next to me, Ms. Ms. Napier and next to her, uh, Ms. Campbell, were are the primary members of the staff, or I think the only members of the staff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and and uh, Ms. Ms. Invina. Uh, this year, uh, uh, after um, Veronica passed a f few months ago, we decided to hire a company to help us with that, uh, and it worked out very well. So yes, thank you all for attending. We'll do a great job next year, and it I hope we never have to go two years again because of a pandemic. And finally, um, the Valley Voice legislative meeting is tomorrow morning. And um, Mayor Prout, I will see you on that call yes, tomorrow sir. morning. In your folders this evening, I've already mentioned the clean, uh, summary of the Clean California Awards that covers both uh, all the projects in District 6 and in District 9 and the projects that were awarded to um, agencies and the projects that Caltrans is going to deliver on their own. 
a flyer for the San Joaquin Policy Conference, which will be held in Clovis on May 11th and 13th. So far, I have um, Council Member Cryer and Mayor Trujillo who expressed interest, but please let me know um, if any of you would like to attend. Don't have to attend the whole conference. If you want to attend the whole conference, we'll cover that. If you just want to go to one, one day or one presentation, just let us know. Schedule of cash disbursements for January and the timeline covering April and May of 2022. That concludes my report, Madam Chair, subject to any of your questions. Okay, does anyone have any questions? No? Even online? It's your chance. Okay, member statements? Anyone else? No? Well, we are wonderful. I like these meetings. <laughs> okay, then we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, we are aye. adjourned. All right.